Welcome back to the channel. Before we get started to the full review of the Vossied Saya, we're going to take a look at a brand new model for Vossied. This is the Vossied Acorn. And I got to say, I've been super excited about this one. I love the overall aesthetics of this knife. I like that decorative pivot. You got nice contouring. You got grippy micarta scales on this one. And I purchased this one off of the Amazon site and that's why I had to go with this one, the coated blade. And this is a medium size EDC knife. It has a front flipper and a blade hole. My favorite means to deploy it. It's got a versatile drop point blade that is in 14C 20 in steel. This is a black wash finish. Excellent long row of functional jimping and you can choke up in that forward finger choil. It's a liner lock, inset liner lock and on the show side scale they just have a very small partial liner that has some heavy skeletonization. You also have some jimping up top and then you have a pop of color in this lanyard tube that acts as a barrel spacer also. You have a deep carry pocket clip that is inset into the micarta along with those screws and it is reversible. Nice action, out of box, well-tuned detent. And I'm going to do some testing with this one this weekend and try to get this review up for y'all. What's special about this knife is its price tag. This is the most affordable Vosti that I remember. You can get it on Amazon. I think it's on Amazon for like $49, but there's a discount coupon on the Amazon site itself. And I think it brings this knife to like $39, bucks if I remember correctly. Man, for that price... This is an outstanding, outstanding knife. If you are interested in this knife, I will have it linked down below. It will be an affiliate link that helps support the channel. But if you don't want to use it, no big deal at all. Now let's get into the PSYOP review. Today we're looking at the brand new Volsteed PSYOP. This is a collaboration with Jeff from Tough Knives. And I like a lot of Jeff's stuff. Really happy to see him collaborating with Volsteed, another one of my favorite smaller companies. And in my opinion, this may be Volsteed's best design so far. Comes in two different variations. You can get it in the contoured plain tie, or you can also get it in the flat tie with the diamond textured mill in it and we're going to chest out the ergos on both of these in a little while to see if there's a huge difference between the contoured and the flat scaled knife it does have good beveling all the way around so may not play as big of a part as i'm thinking it will but we shall see and this is a larger edc knife coming in at 8.01 inches long with a 3.32 inch drop point blade of l max steel rockwell from 60 to 62 and all the l max that i've tested from volsteed has really really impressed me so i won't be surprised if this one does excellent as well do you have a very functional row of jimping up there definitely grabs a hold of the thumb if you need it to you can also choke up in this forward finger troll area and then if you'd rather not this little portion right here on the handle is very very comfortable very locked in that also doubles as a large sharpening choil you can have tons of life before this will widen up all the way to where my fingernail is right there nice top swedge that thins out that tip some so if you need to do some pokey pokey stuff it'll work well for that you can also use it for drag cuts and i was kind of thinking it would be a little harder because the tip is sitting above the center line of that pivot but I can easily get that tip down on the things to do drag cuts. We have a flat grind on this one that comes down nice and thin to around 17 thousandths behind the edge. Let's see what it can do. Man, I absolutely love how sharp these knives come from Vosteed. I mean, some of the sharpest knives I've ever received. Now, you know, they could have handpicked them. I don't know because they sent me this, but Regardless, this thing is wicked, wicked sharp, and I've heard other people say that as well. One thing you do need to be, be conscious of whenever you're doing stuff like this is you're going to want to be in that forward finger trial area so you don't get hung up in that spot. Um, that was the most comfortable for me anyway, so that's where I pretty much lived anytime I was cutting something in hand. But boy, boy. Now we're going to test the ergos. And we're going to test both knives. Right now we're testing the contoured scales. Man, they're very, very comfortable. Now, I do notice that my middle finger is sitting on the button. I'm kind of situating it around it. And not, not, it did not feel like I was disengaging or anything. But just something I want to let you be aware of. I'm able to get a lot of force into this wood. Very, very nice, very comfortable. Nothing poking a prod in me. Now for the flat scale version. Man, that edge, whew, 
Now, of course, this is a fresh, fresh edge because I didn't do the cardboard cutting with this one. I'm mainly just trying to see if there's a big difference between there goes on the flat scale between the contoured scales. Now, for the most part, no difference at all. Now, the only time I really notice anything is at the very end, whenever I'm really, really bearing down, I can kind of feel the clip. I think it's just the way that scale sits in my hands because of the flat scales, but it wasn't terrible. Now, this is where I always love these these sharp, toothy edges from Volsteed doing the rope cutting because this is just a miserable test. I did recently build a jig to do this, but I'm not too sure if I'm even use the dang thing because it, it's going to take triple the time to do it because you got to do it so much slower so i don't know maybe if i have a blister on my hand and i need to get another test done then i'll use it i borrowed the same jig uh idea from calculated survival if y'all want to see that if y'all want me to incorporate it y'all just let me know it does make it a lot easier on my hands but <laughs> so i'm regardless if i do use it or not i probably still do some of this cutting by hand without it because I like to feel how that edge feels and it usually gives me an idea of the the sharpness and that edge bevel if it has a thick edge bevel I can tell right away by the way it's slicing even if it's sharp I mean you can just feel because it takes a nice crisp edge to get through this fibrous rope no doubt half inch sisal rope is no fun to cut especially anything bigger than this but we end up getting through 175 cuts. No doubt I could have done more because the Volsteed's L Max is outstanding. I love it. Uh, I wish, I really would like to see them use the L Max more than the M390. I just prefer it. They do a better job, in my opinion, on the L M390. I mean, on the L Max. Not they do a bad job on the, the M390, but this one just seems to hold an edge a lot better. And that shouldn't be the case. Now I'm just showing you here, you can use that tip. You will have to come up a little bit higher. Um, I'd probably just use the belly. But because of that belly, all this other stuff is going to be an absolute breeze. We are flying through this. And of course my dog had to bark. He, he heard that I was doing my video. But yeah, it still has a ton of bite left to it. We'll test that edge after all this, but uh, it still feels great. And I don't imagine it being a terrible edge at the end of this. So excellent job, Austin. Let's test the edge out. I do have to say that somewhere up in this front portion, I dinged the edge on a hatchet, so it may not cut cleanly in that spot, but it should be good in every other spot. Let's see where. Hit it pretty hard on the hatchet, so, well. Yeah, right there, I got a minor ding, but I mean, not noticeable in the paper cutting and still has an outstanding edge. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action of this knife. You have a front flipper and you have a blade hole. Both of them work great. Front flipper works great and that blade hole works excellent. That's probably my favorite means to deploy. You can also thumb flick it and you can thumb roll it and you can also use the top liner lock to deploy the knife if you want. That top liner lock is basically a compression lock with a button, kind of like putting a CME on a compression lock. It's a very sturdy lock. You can see that button is hooked to that liner right there. And then once you remove the tension from that lock, you have absolutely no friction. And it's riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball. And Vossi does an excellent, excellent job with dialing in their detents. This thing rockets out, no problem, like I said and it's tuned for both actions. Another plus about the top liner lock, it allows you to keep your fingers out of the blade path when you're closing it, so it's nice and safe to open and close. And like I said, it's a sturdy lock. I've done a lot of spine whacking with these and have no problems whatsoever. Tearing up my board. Quickly talk about the ergos of the contoured scales over the flat scales. Of course, the contoured scales are just ever so slightly more comfortable because they have that rounding. I feel super locked in whenever you choke up right here. The only thing I did notice when you're choked up all the way like this, 
got to be careful because that's where this finger wants to land. Now, I just kind of situate around it. And even whenever I am landed on that, I don't ever have, I don't have enough strength in this grip right here to push that down. I just don't. So I don't think it's ever going to be a problem. Just something I want to point out. Only difference I noticed whenever I was really bearing down into the wood between this one and the flat scaled version is that whenever I really started putting a lot of pressure into the wood, I was feeling, let's see, I can't even tell where it's coming from. I was feeling the top portion of this clip right here, maybe where this point is. Uh, it, it wasn't terrible or anything, but I could definitely feel it. And I think it's just because of these being flat, so I'm squeezing it a little bit tighter. This one just melts in the hand, in my opinion. They're both comfortable. You probably won't, my hands are pretty nice and beat up, so you probably won't ever notice the difference. If you like the milling pattern, it's super comfortable as well. They did a good job of chamfering these really nicely. There's no sharp spots where you don't want them to be, so it just depends on what you're looking for. Now let's take a look at the handle area. We talked about the contouring on the scales. You got nice beveling going around here too and everything's nice and softened. You, every The hardware's perfectly flush both sides and you have Torx T8 for the pivot and the body screws. Excellent job. Even the button is pretty close to being flush with those scales. You do have a blue pivot collar on this particular variation and on the flat one, I'm not sure. I think on the black coated versions, I think it's a gold pivot collar. It looks really, really nice. You have a blind screwed mill titanium pocket clip, just meaning that it's screwed from the inside. So it keeps it very clean looking. It is a little bit longer than I would have liked, but that means it's not super, super stiff. Goes in and out of the pocket perfectly. You also have a lanyard hole for the lanyard people. I wish they would have put like a pin back here so you wouldn't have that extra hole. That's just me because you kept it such a clean looking design on this side especially and on this side it would have been nice to not have a hole right there i would have loved just a maybe a pin you have a small titanium backspacer with a gear pattern that does sit a little bit proud of the scales you don't really feel that all that much it, it may help i don't i don't really notice you have partial inset liners on the show side and for the lock especially because that's housing that lock in there. You have all kinds of skeletonization on the top liners. Those tie scales are milled out heavily for those liners. Bring down the weight as much as possible, but this is a pretty big knife, and they use those stainless steel liners on both sides for the toughness of that lock. So if you really count ounces, this one may be too heavy for you. I don't think so at all, for me at least. First is the contoured, and it's 131.1 grams. The flat scaled is 136.8 so a little bit heavier and in ounces 4.62 ounces on the contoured 4.82 on the flat scale so if you're looking to shave a little bit of weight then go with the contour all right it's kind of hard to show the lock up but we're looking there there you go it's about i'd say 40 percent or so and it's a super sturdy lockup because you have the lock bar being wedged in between that stop pin and in the in that little cutout of the blade tang making it a very solid lock and this thing when i say i have no movement i can't flex side to side i can't do any kind of movement up or down left or right super sturdy lock up on my particular knife and as far as disengaging that lock i have absolutely no problems whatsoever to disengage it I know somebody had said, I heard somebody say something about uh, they don't like how after they deploy the knife, they got to come back on the knife to de uh, disengage it. Not something that really bothers me at all. I don't, I don't know. I don't really think about it. It's not, you know, crazy or anything. If I wanted to, I could probably, let's see. Yeah, I could pinch it like that. But for me, nah, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to see how fast I'm not timing myself on how fast I can disengage my lock. Now for some size comparisons, we have the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. Next, we have the Spyderco PM2 and the Hogridder RSK. Next up, we have the Volsteed RS Chaos and the Volsteed Raccoon. Two very similar in overall length is the Wee Knives Vision or the regular Vision. Doesn't matter. They're the same size. And the Kaiser Militaw. 
All right, when it comes to nitpicks and complaints, I really only have two and they're nitpicks. I think it's been nice to have it tapped for lefties. I don't know if there's a left-handed version. I don't think so. It would all depend on Tough Knives' design. And also, the only thing that kind of bugs me, and it doesn't bug me all that much, and that is the blade to handle ratio. I wish that blade would have came a little bit closer to that edge. Just because in the open position, especially being that you have this forward finger troll, it just looks a little off. That said, I still absolutely love the design. I think it's an absolutely beautiful design, a very versatile blade shape. And I gotta say, man, I love, love whenever they use the LMAX because it performed so, so nice. Y'all saw it during the test. It performed great. It held its edge great. Uh, they come stupid sharp out of box. And this one's still nice and sharp. After this video, I'm probably going to hit this on a ceramic rod. And man, this thing's going to be wicked, wicked sharp again. The action's great. If you like to fidget with your knives, this one's definitely fidgety. No doubt about it. And carries well also. Hardest things to get to decide on which one to get. A flat scale, contoured scales are all blacked out. Say what, man. I, th I think I may pick up one of the black wash versions not sure yet which probably this one i know there's not a whole lot left if you are interested in picking up one of these i will have it linked down in the description it is an affiliate link so if you want to help support what i do here on this channel that's the only way to do so if not no big deal at all all right guys and girls if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below i hope everybody's having an absolute absolute amazing day i will see y'all on the next one peace